name is Alyssa and today we are talking about camping in state parks. Right now we are at Doheny State Beach which has a state campground in it. State parks are often smaller, more accessible, and more affordable than national parks while still offering great scenery, history, and outdoor fun. Maybe give them a shot on your next adventure out. State parks also offer a wide variety of camping options from tents, RVs, to sometimes even cabin rentals, and more have been adding glamping options like canvas tents and yurts. I used the Campendium site to scope out a state park. I was able to read reviews, check out the amenities offered, and even see what the cell phone coverage is like. State parks are run by the state government. Opposed to federal government running national parks, state parks are responsible for getting their own funding. So, hence the small fee or annual state pass for purchase. Many states also let you purchase this online ahead of time. It's usually free to walk or bike into a state park, but to camp or bring your vehicle in, you must purchase a pass upon arrival. Most state parks require reservations for camping, and reservation windows can vary greatly depending on the state, from a year in advance to just a few months in advance. So super important to double check with your particular state on what the reservation windows are and when you need to book a reservation a certain amount of time out to get a particular campsite. If you want a beachfront spot here, you're gonna have to do some really fast clicking online. Love your state park campsite so much you feel you could just live here? Well, double check the maximum stay for your state. Many of them are between 14 and 30 days before it's time to pack up and move on so more people can come through and enjoy. State parks do a really nice job with their offerings, from day use areas where you can rent out a picnic for a big family barbecue, to nice campsites with showers and lots of amenities. At the end of the day, it's really about land conservation. So the states are responsible for maintaining these lands and asking for those small day use or annual pass fees help maintain it and keep that land used for recreational purposes. Fun fact, California actually has the largest network of state parks in the United States, although California's also got a big number of fires. So don't be surprised if you end up at a campsite where campfires might be temporarily banned. And no matter what state and wherever you are, please be respectful and burn your campfires where you're supposed to. As a reminder, those park rangers are actually sworn in police officers. So in conclusion, state parks can be a lot of fun and sometimes more affordable with more amenities and less crowds than national parks. Maybe a state park adventure is in your future. Check out the links in the description for some help in planning your next state park camping trip and I will see you in the next one.